It is the day before the convention, and I am building the prop in the hotel room, which is exactly the thing that I wanted to avoid doing, but here we are. Today I'm making an Expanse cosplay. For this build, I use these standard shop tools, a cardboard form tube for concrete posts, a tap light, red lighting gel, aquarium hose, PVC pipe, PVC cutter, wooden dowels, drawer handles, paint, plastidip, bike lights, red LEDs, blue LEDs, pink duct tape, pink safety vest, black Carhartt gloves, a real bad hat, Harry, a jumpsuit, either a climbing harness or a tactical vest, zip ties, straps, foam floor mats, craft foam, contact cement, hot glue, quick seal, sanding materials, and safety gear. Also plutonium. Now because I'm foregoing the more expensive parts of the suit, I have to include the nuclear device, otherwise people just won't get it. You see, a Miller cosplay can be as easy as a cheap suit and a bad hat, or as complicated as a thousand dollar space suit. I don't have the money for that, but I make props for a living, so I have to at least try and split the difference, right? Okay, so first we have to cut up the form tube. Anytime you're working with anything messy, you always want to throw down a drop cloth, I've discovered, after losing so many security deposits. I mean, new from the start because I'm a model tenant, potential landlord who's doing a background check right now. Oh man, this is a bad video to make while I'm apartment hunting. This is about three and a half feet long and I'm cutting off seven inches. For scale, I decided very early on to just eyeball the whole thing. Otherwise, I'd just go insane if I haven't already. I guess I wouldn't know by definition, right? The form tube is meant to be internal support. You could ignore that and make the whole thing out of foam, but that might cause it to look lumpy and nobody likes lumpy nuclear war. Heads. It just needs something inside that's much more durable. Like cardboard. Yep, it's known for its durability, that cardboard is. Oh, what are you doing, Jake? There are four windows in the base of the new, so I cut those using various saws and knives. I'm sure I'm making this harder than it has to be, but I eventually was able to achieve what I set out to do. Once those were cut out, I set the tube aside and began cutting all the surface panels out of EVA foam. Ignore the failed kyber crystals in the corner. Ah, why? Yeah, so that was basically because the knife was dulling as I cut and it was starting to catch on the foam, which left a slightly mangled edge. Some of these edges are actually gonna be visible and the ones that aren't need to be as flat as possible anyway in order for the glue to hold. So I cleaned them up on the belt sander. Okay, to get all the way around the circumference of the pipe, I gotta make this six inch panel. But while I was cutting it, the knife walked just a little bit. And luckily there's just barely enough to get another six inch panel out of this piece. But what I ended up doing was drawing with my Sharpie on that so that I know how much I'm gonna need to sand away to get the whole thing to be level. Yeah, all right. And now we just sand away the flash. The bomb's outer casing is made up of one wide band and two narrow bands. The narrow ones are five inches wide by 28 and a half inches in length. Really circumference, but right now it's length. I'm using the entire length of the EVA foam and I still had to add these five by six inch panels in order to get that circumference. Oh, hey, it looks like a grayscale colorblind Finnish flag. And also probably a bunch of other countries whose flags I don't know because the American school system has failed me. Sorry, world. So sorry. I spent my life watching movies, not learning all the flags. <laughs> oh, so off topic. I traced and cut out this little swoopy nosh, nosh? Not yet, it's a snack, it's a Yiddish snack. I traced and cut out this little swoopy notch for the display, and now it's time to contact cement. So people who haven't seen all of my YouTube videos frequently ask me why I use hot glue and not contact cement. And the answer is I do use contact cement, but I alternate between the two based on what the project demands of me and how good my ventilation is. Because remember, this stuff is carcinogenic and flammable. Now I'm gonna be driving through the South, so this is gonna be sitting in a hot car a lot. So all the seams that are gonna have any kind of tension on them are getting contact cemented together. And to save time, seams that don't have any tension on them are getting hot glue. If I had started this three months ago, then I probably would have contact cemented the whole thing. But hey, hindsight's 2020, right? These first First seams sat for a day before I put any kind of stress on them, and I further tried to reduce the stress by heat forming the foam. I set those to cool inside the tube so that they retain their circular shape. I jury rigged this ridiculous weighted drying station to try and keep those seams together as they set up. When they were completely dry, I reheated the foam, not so much to make it more circular, because I mean, the form tube is gonna do that anyway. This is just more in the hopes that the foam would expand a little bit and I'd have an easier time getting it around the tube in the event that I got the circumference wrong. Then I slid each ring onto the tube and discovered that it got the circumference wrong. You can see the white seam there where it's trying to pull itself apart. I was off by, 
I guess a quarter of an inch. So what I wound up doing was aligning all the seams so that they were on the back. And then I covered them with cemented craft foam band-aids, if you will. The larger ones, the black one at the top and the gray one in the middle, those are actually screen accurate. But the smaller ones, I'm gonna have to disguise with gray plastidip. I mean, I don't really need to. People aren't really gonna see the back of it. Normally you wanna plastidip the entire prop before painting it, but come on guys, I'm not gonna do that just to paint a slightly lighter shade of gray. That's ridiculous. Building a nuclear bomb, that, that's reasonable. But taking the time to paint it correctly, no, that's ridiculous. The bomb has a curved rim at the top and another curved rim near the bottom, just before the windows. To make that, I'm gonna use my helmet templates because I'm building this the weekend before the convention, so I have to cut corners and wherever possible. Just use the ones I have. So, need two sections for the top rim and three for the bottom rim. I attach the bottom rim first because with those windows cut in the tube, the bottom needs to be reinforced as soon as possible before I can put any weight on it because this is meant for a helmet. The diameter wasn't perfect, so I did have to cut off some excess of the third curve section as I wrapped it around the fuselage. No, it's planes. Y you get what I'm trying to say. I put some foam spacers in between the panels to cover the cardboard and moved on to the handles. So these are the second most important part parts of the prop. When you're on a time crunch, you need to add just enough detail for people to get it, but not so much that you're wasting time on the details. Really, for people to get this, you just need gray cylinder, giant silver handles, red light at the bottom, flashing screen at the top, and that'll be enough for people to get it. So first I made a super rough template out of cardboard box. Totally not a wine box. Holy crap, am I an alcoholic? Guys, fine, it goes with the character. I actually uh, di didn't drink that. All of my scrap materials are sourced from trash. <laughs> then I traced that four times onto a floor mat. Yes, I know it's five. One of those was a mistake. Then I cut them out, cemented them together, and traced and cut out four more shapes to make that lattice work, simulating what I saw on the show. I glued them on super carefully because even though they're meant to give the impression of a very strong support beam, uh, this is actually the weakest part of the project. Okay, now because my template is garbage, these aren't exactly symmetrical. So to the belt sander and away! Hey everyone, I just want to take a minute to let you know that these videos are only possible thanks to these people, and I'm aiming away from the microphone right now. Boop. Did I destroy the illusion? Thanks to these people who support me on Patreon and make these videos possible. Also, special thanks to my relatives down in Atlanta who let me stay with them because I could not afford a hotel room at the Hilton or the Marriott or any other possible hotel in that area. Because this is a super low budget show, I try to find any possible way I can to save money when I make these videos. And I usually come out with a pretty cool product, but those shortcuts do have their own little issues. I want to help. Can I help? Is this helping? Am I helping? I'm helping, right? I think it's helping. This is my spot. I don't know what that's for. I don't want it on my head. What's that? Laser beam. At any rate, I'd like to do larger, more elaborate builds like this more often. For instance, I'd love to do a video on Bobby Draper's power armor or fallout power armor. Cause I don't think I'm tall enough to play a Martian Marine. I need so many Apple boxes, guys. So if you like these videos and you wanna support me, there's a link to my Patreon page in the description down below. If you don't have the money to support me, I totally get it. I really, really get it. All right, now back to the build. I sanded them on the belt sander. Then I filled in the seam with quick seal and attached a horizontal band to one end of each handle. Thought it was gonna be two, but there's not actually two in there. Strange, but they have the reasons. I had to trim them and heat form them to get them to line up properly. I did a test fitting and then hit them with plastidip, which is gray, oddly enough. See, if you just get the gray plastidip, then you don't have to paint it at all. While that was drying, I made these caution tape posts by cutting up larger caution tape into smaller caution tape. Okay, yeah, no, that that's that's it. I, I am a crazy person, I'm admitting it. I am out of my mind. Okay, so now this is where I'm deviating from the bottom of the show. The, the actual top of this is flat and the handle placement is different. I'm using this piece of foam that I dished during a demo I did at Toronto Prop Expo to make the top of this thing. Partly just so as not to waste foam, you know? At the time, I was really irritated at having waste Wasted EVA foam, that's my irritated face. But this way, it can be reutilized as an actual prop. I mean, it's not just my neurosis, which is why I'm changing the design of the prop. It's also because I want to be able to open the core, which again, isn't screen accurate, but I have a failed Jumanji jewel lying around that I need to do something with in order to validate the time I spent making it. Oh my God, I really am crazy. I covered the last remaining exposed cardboard with foil tape. Then I made the base out of these rings so I could finally stand it up. Once the stand platform was secured, I added an internal circle to hold in the tablet 
light, which is conveniently at foot level. Now that the main tube is done, I can work on all the details. So, so many details. I painted the nuclear symbol onto the chamber lid and embedded an ultraviolet flashlight into it. I had to sketch this out a couple times to figure out exactly how I should do this before I landed on a design that I thought would be most functional. I attached the handles with wood screws, then I cut a bunch of circles and connected them with hot glue and dowels. Because wood isn't something you'd expect to find in a nuclear reactor, I covered those with foil tape. Then I added this um, gasket, would you call it a gasket? It's kind of fulfilling the function of a gasket, so that's what I'm gonna call it. And I put a foam stopper inside the nuke, which won't be necessary later once the top is sealed, but it helps me out a lot while I'm working on it. I designed this stupidly intricate wireframe to hold the plutonium in place before I thought foam and caution tape dummy. And there you go, plutonium chamber. I set that inside the nuke and sealed it up. Oh, I'm using silver acrylic for all the weathering, by the way, because it's the best paint to use on EVA foam if you're not going to seal it. I 3D printed the Tyco logo because it saved me so much time. I know the colors are supposed to be red, white, and blue, but on the one in the front, it looks like nuclear colors, so that's what I'm doing. Oh, hey, on that note, had I remembered to pack yellow foam, this nuclear logo would be the right color. But here we are. Ah, learned a plan. Oh, also I attached the caution pipes. I made a terrible display panel, but all it really needs to do is blink and say armed, and I think I accomplished that. I covered the tap light in red lighting gel, lightly glued it in place, and diffused it with aquarium tubing held in place with zip ties. I also disguised the cardboard a little bit better. Now, these are terrible hot glue seams, but since they're on the bottom of the prop, no one's gonna notice. Speaking of, I hid the seam on the panel with black craft foam. All right, back to the suit. Okay, so the main parts of an Expanse spacesuit are a jumpsuit, a Mach 3 backpack, a tactical vest, and a low altitude fighter pilot helmet. Now, because it's a TV show, you can actually track down all the individual parts that the production team used to make the spacesuits and purchase them online. However, those four main parts put together before everything else, like all the little greeblies and things, come to about $500, which should give you an idea of why it's so expensive to make TV shows. That's one spacesuit. So every time there's a different person in space, that's another huge chunk of money. It starts to add up. And, uh... <laughs> I am not doing so hot financially right now, so I'm gonna show you how to make one for 50 bucks! I got red bike lights and secured them to the back of my work boots with zip ties to replicate mag boots. The suit itself is an old Air Force jumpsuit from an Army Navy store that I got for about 15 bucks. I put pink duct tape bands on the arms and legs. The gloves that they use in the show are actual, <laughs> they're an actual real type of work glove. So yeah, get those, just be aware, they do not breathe. Miller has this specific revolver called, uh, okay, I'm gonna butcher this. Chiapa Rhino 50DS. It's it's a Type of 357 Magnum. I think it's the same gun that Harley Quinn uses from Suicide Squad, but obviously with a different paint job. I had planned on 3D printing it, but then I read online that they were peace bonding weapons at Dragon Con, so uh, I ended up leaving it behind and using the holster to hold the battery pack for my proto molecule LEDs. I got a pink reflective safety vest for the midsection and a cheap tactical vest from Amazon. Now, the tactical vest doesn't work with the backpack, but I figured out in a trial run of the costume that the backpack not being finished it really didn't add anything to the costume. You know, people got it because of the pink safety bands and the hat and the nuke. Additionally, the camelback leaked, so I couldn't even use it to stay hydrated. So I ended up going with the spin station raid version of Miller space suit, which doesn't include a backpack for some reason. I topped it off with the hat and there's my Joe Miller cosplay. I had a blast cosplaying Miller at Dragon Con. Everyone who'd seen the show instantly recognized me. And it's like, it's such a deep cut to do that specific version that it just blew people's mind. Drunk people ran up to me and were like, oh my god, you Miller the pet nuke. So obviously this is going to have a, a future, a life at future conventions. So I'm going to have to make a more complete version. And that'll range from simple little details like the belt that he uses to drag the bomb to much more elaborate details like a proper EV pack with thrusters and a helmet with a cooling system because it's the only way I can deal with, you know, helmets at these things. I'll have a recap video on that, including how the costume costume fared through the whole event, pros and cons, things I did that worked out really well, things I did that didn't work out so well, that sort of thing. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, you can subscribe and hit the notification icon so you get told when I post new videos. Hopefully, you know, YouTube occasionally has some update issues, but I've been doing them for years, so you could binge watch over 200 of these videos in order and watch me slowly age and become more cynical, but slightly more skilled. Anyway, thanks for watching. Jake out! Hey, hey, do you think the NSA has an algorithm specifically to ignore false positives from me?